thank you. I'm going to suggest that we'll take a few minutes just to do some quick introduction. You just mention your name and the organization you represent uh, so that we can move forward. Can I work for a local NGO called Nardo, but I'm the deputy focal point in NGO Consortium. My name is Bridget Musungu. I'm here to represent American Friends and I'm Catherine Kitao. I'm representing International Aid Services. My name is Fred Lavanya. I'm representing Indian Kenya. Sagal Ali representing UNAID. Rage, the current executive director of Hapa. I'm Sheikh Mohammed Asif. I'm Andrew Harvard. I'm the emergency coordinator for FAO Somalia. Mohamed Akoi, Kor Lee. Mohamed Ordele, Masikops. Katelo Isako, Asset. Augustine Namanda, representing Kobe. Allahi, National City Park. Mohamed Baramose, NCA. Yes, good day, Ukebose, member of TFG. Abraham Yusuf. Welcome to the approach to development of Sultan. Aga Farah, presenting CCD. Aga Mbarhe, Saba. As you all know, we are here for the launch of the AFREX strategic plan for five years. This is the result of some few years of work, so we are happy to have reached here today and we thank you very much for coming to witness this occasion. We know at some point we asked for inputs from many of you. We were very happy to get some valuable inputs. So for that matter, I know some of you are eager to know whether we put that into account and you can be sure we did. So at this point, I'm going to invite Mr. Rage, Abrage, to give the opening remarks. After that, we are going to have a presentation by Dr. Mahmoud Ogas. Then thereafter, we are going to have an open discussion where we are going to have questions, answers. That will also be facilitated by Dr. Mahmoud Ogas. Uh, but Raga will also assist in that process. Thank you very much and welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you for accepting our invitation and sacrificing your precious time to come to this valuable workshop. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you a brief uh, review of the background of AFRAC. During the turmoil in Somalia after the 1991 uh, civil war, when India got an opportunity to intervene, African Rescue Committee was established and registered formally in Ismail Lower Tuba region in uh, July 1992 by a group of Somali intellectuals to respond to increase the suffering, starvation, and death among the communities badly battered by the, both the civil war that broke out and uh, ravaging uh, famine uh, agro-Somalia. Consequently, Africa's initial drive to respond and Alipate the quasi-double tragedy of war and famine in Somalia began with uh, establishment of a pilot community uh, based relief and rehabilitation project preceded by informal community networking and consultation on uh, their priority needs. Since November 1992, 93, sorry, AFRIC has built its reputation as a, a distinct organization having built uh, its own reputation at, at group, grassroots level sufficient to attract funds from a number of UN and international agencies operating in the region as an implementing agency and information sharing partner. Uh, dear uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, African Rescue Committee has been working in the remote areas of Africa where there has been no law and order for the last 17 years. Uh, but has made a great achievement in many different sectors as 
uh, substitute to public and private efforts. For instance, um, during 2006-2007 uh, period, African implemented projects and programs costing more than four, uh, four million dollars. Where more than um, half a million people benefited. During the year 2008, Africa has secured a funding of more than uh, 1 million and pledge of more than um, 1.7 million, which will help a total population of more than uh, 600,000 people. Usually, support to developing countries has been provided in the form of independent projects, each funded by its own donor. In 1990, this approach began to attract criticism from for being donor driven, that's to, that's to say, reflecting donor rather than country priorities and leading to disintegration and duplication. Africa recognized that many individual projects posed unrealistic demand on developing Somalis' limited economic and human resources. Africa also recognized the reluctance of money donors and development partners in funding many long-term projects because of their distinction, this inclination from the local NGOs such as Africa itself. Of course, there were many donors willing to support the poor communities everywhere, but they were uh, indisposed on accountability and credibility of the implementing uh, partners on uh, the ground to whom they would have entrusted their programs. In response to the situation such as when that Africa works in southern Somalia, international donors and partners have a key role to play in how the non-governmental organizations implement effective programs. Donors may, uh, may not always accommodate the needs of the internal capacity of local NGOs, but one of the implementing impediment they face is their own NGOs' inability to stick to their mission and show their credibility, accountability, and transparency. One reason for that is the NGOs' lack of readiness or lack of awareness to develop a strategic plan, which clearly show their organizational capacity parallel with the services they are providing. It is because of this reason that Africa decided to set up a five-year strategic plan show its organizational capacity to the stakeholders. The development of the five-year strategic plan came after Africa realized it is, it is need as an essential component of this growth to maturity. Consequently, Africa's approach, uh, approach Dr. Mohamed Ugas Mohamed, who was then a PhD candidate in organizational development to take the his case is study on Africa for PhD thesis. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to say that Africa fully funded the PhD thesis of Dr. Mahmoud, costing about $123,440, which culminated into this strategic plan not only to the um, benefit Africa, but also a model for Somali local NGOs. In taking advantage of Dr. Mahmoud's research, Afrek hired him as a consultant to work with a newly established uh, planning unit to assist in compiling the strategic plan. A strategic plan for non-profit making charitable organizations, especially for those working in the remote areas of the Horn of Africa, where nothing is predictable, is very difficult to, to model. It is also very difficult to convince donors who are willing to be assistance to those poor societies to channel their funds through the existing um, civil societies, which are not feasible according to the scale of the mission rate of the donors, especially in Somalia. Here, main donors do not directly fund the local in Chobartali because of lack of government and legal institutions which um, could be accountable to them. The research question that this is explored was if African Rescue Committee, Africa could achieve effective results through a strategic plan. 
the consumption was that if African Rescue Committee had, a, had set a strategic plan, if that plan had been endorsed by all its, its stakeholders, then the service it, uh, it provided would have been effective in, in return built its own capacity and sustainability. For further detail, please read Mahmoud Ugas, Achieving Effective Results Through Strategic Plan. The case of African Rescue Committee. The five-year strategic plan flow with the assessment of both the internal and external environment of Africa truly and in the process identified the critical areas. The research focused on two areas, namely the capacity building basket and the program intervention uh, basket. Ladies and gentlemen, just as a human being develops from conception to death, an organization goes through process of development until it becomes mature enough to play a tangible roles of different scales from relief and development to policy reformation and advocacy. As we are aware, from was not built a day. Similarly, to build a capacity of an organization and target communities, it must go through process, stages and phases until a final graduation stage. The purpose of the five years strategic plan is to make Africa's operation more effective by gradually building their internal capacity of the organization and simultaneously responding to the community's prioritized needs according to Africa's competence. The ultimate goal is to empower the local people to assume more responsibility and to foster to some extent a change in their livelihood. Throughout Somalia, the logic and justification of funding, the charitable organization in both their program of intervention and their capacity building package is clearly coming from the necessity that organizations should be accountable to all. Unless Africa's capacity is built to show credibility, accountability, and transparency, its influence in the local communities, and lobbying power in international communities is minimal. An effective implementation of any project or program is essential if planning results have to be attained. For Africa to be accountable to all, it should be mature enough to run its programs effectively and stay as an entity sustainable. This sustainability is inter, um, interrelated with the credibility and transparency. Organizations cannot be credible without being on the track of sustainability. The sustainability was what the research considered as a part and parcel of the capacity building package that donors must have given a great deliberation and as a basic theory to use as a guide. As a guide. Otherwise, the real objective of the donor's willingness to support the poor and disadvantaged uh, communities through non-profit making organization will be implausible and in question. Ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to share with you today includes the prime position of local NGOs in the new reformation of the method of aid delivery and the emerging sector-wide approach, SWAM, led by the United Nations and the international NGOs. And the SWAP project funds continue, contribute directly to sector-specific uh, umbrella and are tied to a divine sector policy and under government authority. <coughs> In essence, SWAP calls for a partnership in which government and the development agencies change their relationship to clear government relationship, leaderships. They interact, they interact more in the formulation of policy and less on the details of the implementation. Local actors, including the local NGO, are given a greater role. However, this is not possible in Somalia where there is no uh, central authority that could be accountable to all the other partners. Therefore, this profound research opens a new doors for local actors to have significant role in supporting many vulnerable people to break the disaster cycle and reach sustainable development using their own natural resources. In this regard, AFREC is going to conduct 21 studies, uh, surveys, and assessment in five years. 
to build the data bank to rely on. These areas will cost 2.4% uh, of the total budget, which will be a total of uh, 266, 100, similar to that. AFREG have developed a program and projects to get rid of all other critical areas so that AFREG would be fully uh, mature in all aspects of five years. Ladies and gentlemen, in these five years, strategic plan AFREG has set up two types of uh, budget. The first one is to current budget, including AFREG operations, office upgrading and enhancement, staff and community training and uh, studies and needs assessment. And the second budget is the project budget consisting of services, programs, and projects with which AFREG will support its target community in five years. The project budget came under two phases. The first, the grant, um, first two years from 2009 up to 2010 and the three years from 2001, uh, 2011 up to 2013. The grant total will be 10 million 590, US dollars of which 13.6% or a total of 1,463,050 uh, will be utilized as a current budget while the remaining 86.4% which is a total of 9,427,500 will be for the project budgets. AFREG identified five uh, different uh, sources of a budget. AFREG has planned that this budget will come from five different sources, including AFREG income generating projects that will be uh, fruitful in the third year and will cover a total of 477,674,000 uh, or 4% of the total budget. The other source of the budget will be local community contribution which will be in many forms in kind, in local material and in the form of labor which, labor, which will probably translate it into money which will come to 7% of the total budget or 756,775. The third source of the income will be contribution from the Somalis in diaspora. This will include cash, cash or in-kind contribution of all benevolent individuals abroad. This will be a total of 938,851, or 9% 9 of the total budget. The fourth source is the translation of all activities that AFREG volunteers will contribute, which will cover a total of $562,265, or 5% of the total budget, since AFREG is still growing and only plans to be fully mature in five years. 75% of the total budget will come from all other uh, potential donors and partners in implementation, uh, which will come to a total of 8,154,550 uh, for five years' time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my last word but not least is if only donors had tried to reach their objective of supporting this poor community through the local NGOs like Africa, the situation in Somalia would have, would have been much better. Local NGOs need the partnership of international NGOs and acceptance of the donor communities in order to reach their purposes of existence. I would also like to remind you at this opportunity that will be an open letter of endorsement at the end of the workshop and I urge you to feel free to take one minute and fill, and fill the form and sign it. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your uh, respectful listening and care, and I deeply indebted to you all. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure uh, to me to have all these people listen to my findings in my PhD thesis, which uh, the fruits of which become a certain strategic plan for 
one of the very tiny NGOs in Somalia. And uh, many of you would be able to have the final book of the research. There is a form we will fill and you can get it. Uh, there is also a compiled uh, strategic plan for Africa, which uh, would be available in Africa's office, and you can get it on, on request. The one you have is just the summary of some of the slides I'm going to share with you today. But at the end of the time, there will be a small slip in your package that take one minute, read it, and give us an endorsement of how you see the outcome of this workshop. So when an NGO has a strategic plan, we are having their growth should simultaneously come up with the level of intervention they are making. So this is the whole notion of a strategic plan. And it helps the organization to grow, in the meantime, extend their intervention level. Uh, when we, we talk about which NGO is matching, which organization is matching, whether it's a business or a non-profit or whatever, even a military or government, every organization puts a goal somewhere and tries to follow this green light, which is not usually possible. Because the strengths of that organization is always scattered back, not in the front, but just we see the bigger stars. The strengths of every organization is scattered back, not at the beginning of your operations. Similar to that, there are opportunities that you have in your external environment, which are very small at the beginning, but they grow and grow and they become larger at the end. So these are the positive side of the internal and external environment of every organization, but there are also weaknesses which are very strong at the beginning, and there are also traits, external traits, which should be diminished at the end. When you have this in mind, or as a checklist, you know your track. You don't have to think of following the green line straight. There are ups and downs, there are obstacles, there are traits, there is a problem. So this is the best line you follow. Use your strengths and get advantage of the opportunities you have, that's the way you can reach your goal. And that's the whole notion of a strategic plan. Let me come back uh, immediately, go straight to the organizational capacity assessment of Africa. When we are considering an organization thinking of having a strategic plan, it's not possible without assessing its own internal capacity. Not only the internal, the external traits, the external opportunities, the whole environment should be scanned and treated well. Throughout the three years of my research in my PhD, I was studying only Africa and its environment. And this is what I want to share with you. Africa is now nearly mature because it's presenting its weaknesses and critical areas to its partners, to its stakeholders. That's, that's the starting point of being strong. We will cover two main areas, internal environment, consisting of these four areas, or state units, and the external environment, consisting of these three other areas. So throughout these slides, we are going to cover and see all this. In the book, the details of our findings are shown in the strategic plan. The details of the strategic plan itself is shown here. But in my presentation, since time is gone, we want to concentrate on the critical areas that Africa is weak at and that they have to make improvement. In this assessment, you will see numbers. Zero will be standing for that there is not enough information or this element cannot be assessed. It's not even at foundation level. One is much better, two, three. When we see number six, we mean that at this steady unit or level or, or element, that organization is very mature. The organizations grow and, and pass this 
but it's very normal. At foundation level, from 1 to 1.2, it's just a number, we, the justifications will all be shown here. I, if, you, if you ask me a question, I will only refer you to read the book, but I'll share some of my experience, of course. Uh, that's the foundation level. In the blossoming, or some others say nascent stage or whatever, it's up to 2.3, promising, and they grow, intensify, and they become much. When we usually assess organizations which existed for a while, we consider they will be fully mature in five years when they concentrate their critical areas and formulate projects to make improvements. So the first assessment, this is a slide which shows the whole overall average of AFREX assessment. In, in the governance, AFREX shows 4.5, which means not yet fully mature, because if, if they would have scored 4.7, they could be mature. So AFREX is not mature in any of the elements we evaluated, and we all agree with that. And this was a three years process. And they are satisfied with that level. But they were nearly mature, but there was no critical area in the overall average for them, for every element to assess it. Under these seven steady units, there were 85 sub steady units, 85. Out of that 85 steady units, Afric was immature and very critical, and without making an improvement, they couldn't go forward, and they cannot even be named as an existing organization for six areas, and we will share that with you. In the internal environment, the green lines you see, the bar, they are very mature. They are almost above 4.7 and they are mature. In the legal status, stakeholders, the leadership, they showed very mature, like maturity level. But in the board and its assignments, in the mission statement and how people share with, they were a little bit down. There was no critical area in those uh, stadiums. In the management practice, but we want to concentrate on it is critical areas and how weak they are. In the information system, which is one element of the management system, AFREC is very, very weak. They scored two. How? They have a website, just a good example. And if you visit AFREC's website today, and six months after now, it's just the same website. They did not conduct any assessments. Their information management system is totally very poor. They did not employ an expert to share the data they collect very fairly with all of their stakeholders. Their management information system within the office itself is in the hand of very few people. And and they are very proud to, to share that idea with you here. So that's a very weak point. The next is the human resource. They are not weak at any, uh, there's no critical and there's no mature level. We'll pass this one. We'll go to the financial resources. In the financial resources, Afric's accounting system scored 5.5, which is nearly six. That means they showed very good accountability. They have the, the regular, uh, Balance sheets, financial statements, project level financing and budgeting, and they are accountable to every stakeholder. The stakeholders know their expenses, their, their incomes, and how they use. They keep all the uh, support documents very properly, and a long list of items they score it high, which is a very big idea of, of accountability of organizations. I have seen many other small NGOs. Their weakest point was the accountant. Afraid is totally different. They are weak at many other points, which others were strong. But at this point, Afraid's accounting system was very strong. Uh, in the income base, income base, which means the organization cannot be sustainable long time if even a year donors and their partners stop funding. So they don't have any diversified funding. There's no income generating scheme. They don't have partnership, which they, they, they get contributions, and their income pays, even they don't use very properly their local sources at field level. So that income base is also very weak. And I mean, not only weak, but very critical. 
and we developed programs and projects and the strategic plan which they are going to empower in those areas we say critical. And that's why I'm giving emphasis to them. In the external environment, there were three big uh, steady units, uh, the service deliver. They have experts at the field level, they implement projects, they give service to their communities, they do assessments and whatever. But when you come to the assessments, the service, the studies they conduct, it's very, very gloomy, it's a very dark shade. <laughs> That's very weird. And when you have to implement a project without having studied the socioeconomic status of those people, the resources they have, their strengths, you propose a project, it means you are going to spoon feed them but you are not going to use their resources and give them power that things will be sustainable in their hands. That's the whole idea of, of why we make community needs assessment and service. And in this process, we will see AFREC is going to conduct 21 assessment surveys and research with educational institutions and consultancies in the coming five years that will totally make them very mature at this point. Now that's the goodness of finding their critical areas. In the external relations, they have scored two points very mature, and at one point the media. These days we all know Obama and his friend. How come we know Obama? Is it because he's Kenyan? No, it's the media. The media is now becoming a tool, a very powerful tool for businesses, for politics, for NGOs, for everything. If you are not connected to the media, if you are not getting advantage of the media exposition, then you can't be a voice for the voiceless people you are serving. We are all here, when we are a humanitarian organization, we are the voices of those voiceless people. The thing, you don't use the media. None of your articles are in a newspaper. You don't have any commercial in the TV. You don't distribute pamphlets and periodicals. You don't publish any book. That's all the media. The how can you advocate for your people? That's very weird. So Africa is a week at this point. And Africa is going to spend $65,000 for the media exposition in the coming five years to cover this area and become strong. The next one, the, the overall organization of sustainability, which is usually consisting of the program sustainability, that means their services, their programs, their expertise, the people they plant inside the community when they pass out to be empowered, that's the program sustainability. And the financial sustainability, how much of the local resources they utilize, they exploit. How much Africa will die? Can you believe that? Because he shows some weaknesses in the resource-based sustainability. And I'm going to share with you some of the strengths he has, which is going to get advantage of the outside opportunities to build these weaknesses. Resource-based sustainability. How much human resource he created and he leaves, everything will be handed over to. And, and if, I'm, if I'm very poor, you, you excuse me, because we have a session, we shared all these ideas before, and he's very grateful of them. And I, I hope you are all happy with it. So, if that is about Africa, in a brief, very short, how about the community needs? Wow. We send the teams to the field, they have so many systems, PRA, ARA, so many other uses, they waste pair, pairwise ranking methods, they gather, People, mainly they concentrated 240 people, you will see the details in the book, and have interviews and questionnaires, they, they were making facilitation for these people. And they find finally that the community which Africa service has these prioritized needs. Education is first, health service is second, agricultural input, third and so on. These 10, 10 findings. So if this is the need in the area, and that's number one, two, three, then Africa has to concentrate on responding all these areas. 
what, what are they going to do with these communities? The community's power has to be built. There's common mechanisms. Uh, they have to build air warning systems, which doesn't exist in the area, except some few international NGOs, which just predicted the, the uh, are not even concentrating the disaster cycle management, because there is, uh, we, we, we come to that. They are going to build air warning systems, disaster prevention mechanisms, disaster mitigation, contingency plans, planning beyond relief and recovery, which they are targeting to have some development projects. In the five-year strategic plan, which is going to respond both the internal critical areas and the community needs, Afrag has this plan. The new vision is just very common, just for the well-being of those people. We, we can't escape that one now. And the mission is also a broad sense of that. We don't have time to explain this, you'll see in the book. Uh, Afrag is going to give more consideration in the disaster site. There are disasters which are eminent there. Disasters consisting of the vulnerability of the target community and the natural hazards, the war, the fight, the floods, the, the roads and all these things. There's always a disaster there. And during the disaster period, Afrit has to respond to emergency programs, food feeding, food aid, whatever. People need some kind of strength to be alive and, and help themselves. The next stage is recovery and then rehabilitation. Usually the disaster comes again, but Afrit has programs of making some sustainable development, helping some of its target communities to escape this disaster cycle. And then next time there will be a preparedness which they will help the, the community to have an ability to cope up with the coming disasters. So this disaster, when it comes to the roads, it's usually a five year cycle. It used to be ten years in the past. When it is war, it's it's every few years, a few months, it's not predictable. But always disasters come and Africa has to plan every intervention they are doing through this life, through blood cycle. Every project AFRA is going to propose to grow this disaster management, uh, the project cycle management, which are two alpha steps. And many of us follow, but some of them follow only three or five of these stages. AFRA accepts initiations from every individual in the field to propose an idea, but it will go into brainstorming with its field staff, and when that is feasible, then it comes to a previsibility stage that AFRA has to make some tangible program say, is this feasible or not? And then a skilled professional should conduct feasibility study about that project. And then to contact the stakeholders, everyone in the field, and say, how do you see if we implement this project? Is it feasible? Without endorsement, Afrag starts project proposal writing, and then fundraising, and implementation starts. During the implementation, there's a monitoring, checking the inputs of all these programs, and evaluation and reviews with the help of every stakeholder and impact assessment. This is going to be not a new policy, but they will really like to concentrate following all these steps with the help of everyone involved in sharing their obligations and roles and responsibilities. They are going to have two main strategies in the phase out process because Africa cannot always have an input in every project. There will be a time they will phase out. During that phase of the strategy, it might be based on the human resource. If the project has 100 staff, the staff will be concentrated in the, in the middle and will be a small step by step gradually diminishing policy. If every year, they will introduce a new, new department. The blue ones, they are going to introduce two country directors, Kenya and Somalia, next year. And third year, they will introduce human resource development department, which they are planning to give more training and assessment to their people. And in the third year, they are going to introduce a deputy executive director, which I hope will be very charismatic leader like Raggy, will be coming in power. And in the fourth year, they are going to have three finance officers in their three areas of operations. So this is going to be one of the... 
If you want to see the details of, of each one of these units or hair, then you will find in that book. Growth in internal operations. In order to grow, become mature, and cover, and have a solution to the critical areas, they have to grow in their internal operations. And what are they going to do? We talk about the salary of the staff, allowances, rights, fuel, utility, transportation, consultant, and all these things. These are the internal operations of Africa. It has to be increased every day, every year. And how? This is going to be the coming budget for Africa. In the 2009, their internal operation budget will be only $68,000, which is even a bit more than where they are now. But at the end of the strategic plan, they are going to have $213,000 for their own internal operations. You can imagine how much change they are going to create and how much improvement they are making. Within five years, Africa's internal operation is going to be $685,000. There will be staff and community training Africa is going to conduct just to, to, to improve their own critical areas. In the governance, management, finance, human resource, those areas we have seen. And in the community mobilization, sensitization, resource planning, conflict resolution, peace building, and in all these areas, Africa showed much weaknesses and they don't have very formal training in capacity building uh, in their staff and their community they work with. So they're going to conduct, for the first year, they're having these five trainings. I'm not going to read them all. And the next year, they're having another five trainings, five training, and five, and another five. So within five years, Africa is going to, co to carry on in different modules, different levels for their staff and community they work with with all these trainings, and this is one of the capacity building packages. And they already identified their source of funding, as Rad was reading the, the, the text. For all these trainings, Africa is going to implement 443,800 with the little growth on. In the second third strategy, there will be regular office upgrading and enhancement. Any one of you see Rad's office? and where he supported hundreds of thousands of people in the field now, two tiny small rooms. That's, that's nice. That's, small is always bright and good. But Africa is going to grow and upgrade its offices and staff, and it's already, uh, they have leased five years, some new office in West, where, where is that office? In West Land. So they'll increase their, their, their uh, a good office environment, new office technology, enough office furniture, office of trust, and, and this is going to be their, their funding. In the third strategy of the internal capacity building, Afraid has to build a data bank. And why? The use of the local resource properly, Afraid should make local resource market and build a resourceful data bank where the stakeholders get a bank to benefit with all their information as an input. And they will build their website very properly. So in the studies, they will have five studies and surveys in the first year, another four in the second year, another three in the third year, and so on. And they will have a total of 20 studies and surveys and assessments of different levels for five years. This is going to be their budget. Uh, and that was the internal capacity building part of the program. When we come back to the community they serve, if you remember the first slide I shared with you, when they grow, they have to grow their or extend their programs as well. But the reason Africa is building this capacity is not to be strong or simply employ people. That's another opportunity, but that's not the main idea. The idea is to make an effective intervention at field level and do everything very efficiently. So. Afrex is going to have these eight programs in Invest One for two years, and another eight programs in Invest Two, and a total of, uh, I mean, 12 programs. Some of them will continue for three years, others might be two years or one year. The details are shown in, in their separate proposals. 3.7 million will be the first two years Invest One program intervention, 
and 5.7 million will be the next three where they have better capacity. In fact, the five-year spike is in a nutshell in a, a, a small graph. Is, it's divided into two. There is always a current budget for their own internal use and a project budget. The current budget is consisting of their operations, their upgrading, trainings, and studies. And the projects they serve is service <coughs> programs and, and projects. So we call this capacity building basket or package, and we call this one program intervention basket, which should go parallel and in a simultaneous way. The current budget is 1.4 million for five years, divided into these areas, or within the current budget, they are going to use 48% of that for their own internal operations, 16% uh, for training, 5% for upgrading, and 21% for stages and services. Out of, not the total budget, out of the current budget. The project budget, I said, is 3.7 million and 5.7, but 39% of this budget comes the first year which they are weak, and 61% will be when they become a little stronger at the end of the phase. The source of budget, as identified, is coming from uh, income generating projects, which is going to be nearly half a million, because some of the programs they intervene will be small income generating programs of their own, which will, will be fruitful in the third year. And there will be local community contribution. When they intervene, the community has to make some tangible contribution in their resources, the manpower, the local material, and everything, the voluntary work. Uh, there are Somalis in diaspora, which we all know, and other uh, international individuals abroad, which usually make good contribution in Africa's operation. They will be making nearly one million contribution. There's voluntary work. Uh, Craig was mentioning this thesis costs us $120,000. But that's true. But I assure you, 50% of that budget was my own voluntary work. Because I'm making some input to my people. And I have to make that. So there is always a voluntary work of Afrex community, which is going to cost $5.5 million, which is a great, a tangible, significant amount. And then the remaining eight million is coming from donors and partners. The total budget is 10.9 million for these five years. Uh, in short, Africa is going to request 75% of that budget from the donors, because they are not mature. But when Africa is mature after five years, this will gradually decrease down to nearly 50 and they will increase their other means of resources. That's what we were talking about, the resource-based sustainability. Uh, thank you for your listening, and I don't know if I have spent more than my time, excuse me for that. The floor is open now for questions and answers. And uh, contributions from the And uh, of course, I haven't read the documentary. Uh, we'll see it later, but uh, uh, how is Africa going to organize the contributions from the diaspora? And if I give an example, for instance, the well-renowned guru of NGO management, Peter Kraga, has promoted the membership tribes, the name and the concept of membership tribes into a uh, fund development. So, uh, if you rely on community contributions and uh, contribu uh, communities face always from time to time and uh, disasters and whatnot, and they also have their own challenges. And uh, the same uh, faces the people of uh, diaspora. H how do you want to sustain that? How do you organize that? So that you, you, you change the, the membership contributions is something sustainable, permanent. Fund development turns the membership drives into a membership, uh, permanent membership contributions. Thank you very much. There are hundreds of thousands of Somalis in diasporas. 
and uh, they have already been making tan tangible contribution for Africa in their internal operations. And when this comes, this one itself is a contribution from Somalis in diaspora. I live in diaspora. I have a Canadian passport. And I don't always say I'm Canadian. I say I have a Canadian passport and a mobilization. The first training Afric staff is going to take is community mobilization skills and community sensitization skills. And then when that is replicated in many areas, the fund will come through membership and through regular contribution, through events of fundraising uh, uh, events, or fundraising events. So I, I'm very positive. We have an answer, but I'm not 100% sure whether we will attain that target, that just is a plan, and there's always contingent plan. If we don't find that for Afrid, there's another plan which Raggy knows better than I do. Uh, thank you, Abdul uh, It's really um, a challenge that the Somali local NGO are facing every time and then. Um, in general, um, people are changing. The Somalis are changing their minds that they can more uh, civilize it in a way that uh, earlier they used to contribute in a way that uh, maybe in a traditional way, but now uh, people are uh, changing and they are reaching they reach a level where they uh, contribute directly to uh, a general uh, 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 common issues. Uh, Africa has a mission and a vision. And anybody who believes and endorses the Africa's mission and vision um, should contribute. Uh, Africa has uh, clearly understood and uh, articulated the priority needs of the communities that it serves in the lower and middle Juba and has gone a stage further in uh, identifying programs and uh, projects for the next five years that it would like to be involved in carrying out. I'm wondering, and the question is in two parts, whether Africa intends any geographical expansion of the area in which they operate, and to where they see their current uh, sectoral focus and expertise, and where they think it will be in five years' time. Africa's geographical area will be as it was in Somalia, uh, with the exception of uh, some uh, more projects and services in the areas they do not, they do not intervene much like in Jamame and Jilivan and, and Afmedo areas and Bo'ali, they will make uh, tangible programs there, as shown in the strategic plan. But the other expansion is come to Kenya itself in the northeast, where they are going to have an area office and one pilot project and one main project for the coming five years. That's an expansion. Uh, the other was the sectoral focus. Of course, there are five sectors, uh, food security, education, health, wash, uh, hygiene, and water, and whatever you call, and the peace building. Uh, they don't have a special preference on which area they focus, because the mission has not been changed that much. The mission was for the well-being of these people, to focus for the well-being. Well-being this time, as community prioritizes, is maintaining an environment which make it able to the people to make intervention and come up with projects and programs, they will intervene with education, health, sanitation, and food security and agricultural inputs. So it's all about the last five sectors they were doing, and that hasn't changed also. Within five years' time, where is Africa going to reach, and what are they expecting? Two answers. Number one, in their own organizational growth, they are going to be mature in five years. Number two, they are going to mobilize the community resources, which now contributes less than 3%, the community contribution will be more than 10% in five years, and then community will be transferred to a knowledge and a skilled manpower and, and markets for their products. And, and they, they are written as a text. I do not have a slide to show you, but that target where they want to reach and where they want their community to be in is also clearly mentioned here. So, if I have answered it yeah. halfway. We intended to to be very cautious on uh, expanding our geographical uh, coverage for the coming five years. Even though being registered in Kenya, 
uh, we were then considering whatever services we are providing also, we also uh, reach the area bordering with uh, the area we are working in Juba, uh, northeastern district uh, uh, areas. That is number one. Number two, uh, what is leading us and guiding us is mainly the needs of the people, of where we are working. Uh, so, uh, yes, it is a weakness of having uh, many programs when maybe the capacity is very limited and that is uh, somehow or the other um, is a challenge. But uh, as we grow uh, in that five years, we just started with a very limited programs, and as we grow, then we add it. Uh, we have a very strong uh, plan of and everything we are going to do will be based on our capacity. But mainly the area we will focus will be on areas uh, around these uh, social services and, and production. That's the major two areas that we are going to focus in general, uh, but as our capacity uh, grow, our, ex our uh, program is really, really increase uh, uh, simultaneously. I think uh, this is a really commendable job, um, and a strategic plan helps know where you're going, not only going, but where you're going. Uh, and I think we must thank Afrik um, coming up with this strategic plan and sharing with us. Uh, I have a um, few issues. Uh, I think some of them may not be responded in this forum, but uh, it's just uh, having also a background or strategic uh, planning area. Uh, maybe it could be an issue that you pick it up uh, from this point. And the first one is what can you do better than the other organization that operates in Somalia as a group? What can you do in a better way, in a better results? in a better time frame and in a better cost-effective manner when you compare yourself other organization operating in the same place. I think that is a critical question. Uh, it may not have come out clearly as a niche in the presentation. Number two, how can you win the heart of the diaspora, the community, and Somalia probably call it strategies how do you get the money out of the pocket of my colleague here who's uh, just had the presentation in this area. Uh, the third aspect is that um, you may have put your presentation started with your capacity, but I would have thought you would have started what you wanted to do and how you want to do in a later stage. For example, put the program what you want to do, which I see is too ambitious, to have eight programs area uh, and then more your capacity and uh, capability and infrastructure uh, based on what you want to do in front of you as a vision. Uh, the third aspect that I think is uh, coming out, uh, wasn't coming out to me, is what uh, your assumption on the basis of this strategic plan. Suppose there is uh, there is uh, uh, embargo on Somalia in terms of uh, U.S. dollars shilling. So I know sometimes uh, it's, it must be thinking of. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking a bit, emphasizing on anything can happen. So what are your assumptions on the basis of this strategic plan? The whole mission of a strategic plan was not to compare the organization with other NGOs. It was to find out the weaknesses and the strengths, and then getting advantage of that strengths, Africa will grow and make an effective result. There were some elements we studied, which in fact uh, uh, studies the inter collaboration, networking, relationship with the government, with the stakeholders, with the business, with all these things. And that's a very positive approach to know how Africa is close to other groups. But other groups themselves were not assessed. Then we can't say Africa was good at this point and much better at this point compared to others. The whole study was just to study Africa and its weakness and strengths.
and then find out its opportunity and traits, and then find out a plan to build this and respond to the community very properly. If you read the purpose and the objective of the strategic plan, it will answer many of your questions. I will stop that one there. The next point was uh, how they are going to win the heart of the diaspora. They have already been doing a good job, and their running cost was mostly covered by the diaspora. They will make more efforts to do that, starting with the sensitization and the mobilization campaigns, which the staff itself will get trained, and the diaspora people will get trained, and then we, have, we are going to have link on how they, they increase their funding and collaboration. Uh, the reason we started the capacity of Africa is exactly also to know where Africa is now and then where it is heading to. So when you, when, you, when you assess the capacity and you say, look, Africa is weak at all these points and also very critical at some of them, you are clearly answering where Africa is. And when you have a plan of five years where it wants to reach, you also answer it, the whole plan. And that's not an isolated issue, which Africa is only thinking of growing by itself. But in line with that, they are also increasing and expanding their intervention levels step by step. Uh, how Africa is going to measure its success stories or indicators of success and so on, there are criteria of and indicators of success. Every big project Africa proposes is written in what we call a logical framework matrix, where it shows objectively verifiable indicators in a column, and in a detailed project proposal with the 12 steps of the of the uh, manage, of the project management cycle. Uh, objectives of every project may be different from the objective of others, but as an organization and it is success. Is already shown here, and I don't want to repeat everything is shown here, and I have to answer. But I am I am giving you time to have your time and read thoroughly, and then be a good friend, contact us back, and then share more ideas. But if we answer every big question, these are an excellent question that I have to answer. But many of them are answered here. Africa is not very much over ambitious. Africa is trying to grow very slowly, and with this slow growth they are going to attain their, their position. When Africa is mature in five years, inshallah, if they are going to have another five year or ten year strategic plan, they will definitely have to change three things. Their mission statement, which should be very narrow, their sectoral intervention and where they want to focus, which should not be Helping the whole community, everything they want, like track Fortress, well, that will also be very concise. The capacity constraints, the critical areas they are mentioning, will not be also very broad as it's now because they are already mature and they will concentrate more on their external interventions. So, this is the beginning of the strategic plan. This is the beginning of being mature. And if we don't answer many of your questions, and if you don't expect us, I mean, you don't expect us to be 100% perfect in all what we present. There are more theories we want to apply with the help of you all. Uh, my only worry is that I'm, I'm not worried about the Kenya part, but my worry is more about the Somalia part because you're only functioning in the Jubas. And uh, with this five strategic, five years strategic plan, I think it's a little bit too long, but in all cases, you will need to have parallel to it a contingency plan. Because the situation is changing every day. so. We might walk up tomorrow, all the jubas are full of just floods. What are we going to do and what is Africa approach is going to be in any, in any different scenarios, not only floods? Thank you. I think it's a commendable job. It's a commendable work done by Africa. It's the first time now we are seeing a local NGO tries to bring a strategic planning in a, in a orderly manner. Um, I think in, you have put a five-year plan. And my question also goes to um, what, uh, the issue of the expansion. Because as a local NGO, most of the time we are, you know, you know, accused that you know we are only working in our comfort area, in an area which our client is based, you know. So um, when we see expansion, I could have seen an expansion of 
new areas so that we can you know go beyond the color boundaries you know that's also one critical issues which we have you know i'm representing local NGO, so i i know and uh, the romans you know which you know our, we, we, i know our weakness you know because for 10 years i was working on a ghetto so you know it's you know people can tell you easily you're working in your color area so and we are in 20 years on difficulties. So if, if every NGO work is its own area, then we will not have a national focus. You know, that's one critical observation. Uh, not only for Africa, it's for all the other NGOs. And the other issue here is sustainability. I think when we are talking about sustainability, also we have to also link, you know, with our own culture, because in in you know our Somali way of giving out. We have not maybe gone in a stage, maybe those uh, people on the diaspora can understand the meaning of uh, institutions like the NGOs or helping in the communities. But if, even if you can link, you know, our traditional of an Islamic way, like, you know, zakat, like, you know, uh, sadaqa, that kind of, uh, on, 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 on those charitable thinking of an Islamic perspective, I think also we can also tap the the issue of sustainability, not only depending on donor. For us, I think the donor, I think of mainly on you know, uh, the Western donors. Thank you very much. The Islamic way of doing this, the cultural way, uh, what people have and how we can mobilize them, there will be one of, one of the studies Africa is going to conduct is Islamic Sharia law and the relationship it has with our culture in terms of development, this is going to be a very uh, unique study that has not been conducted before. If that is contracted with other educational institutions, and we study that, the outcome will be fruitful for money to use the strengths in our Islamic Sharia and link them with the capacity we have in our culture and then go forward to pass on these ideas. There's one study here. Yeah? And in the, I think in the summary book, if you see the studies, one of them is, is clearly saying that. Uh, an integrated community development program, which is costing, was it 35? 35% of the whole five year budget is only that project, which is a pilot project. This is a new idea. Why? Somalis are strong. They can utilize their resources. They have power to do so. They live independently. They don't want to wait for food aid and the hand of international community to give them. Some of the UNDP uh, indicators of uh, development says last year, Ethiopia, a big country with big resource, with big donors, which is the greatest recipient of aid in Africa, the GMP is only $100 a year, while in Somalia, where there's no government.